May I look around the castle? Um, I'd very much like to talk to Lewis one more time. Of course. We have nothing to hide. Stay as long as you like. Only please keep away from the private rooms. That goes without saying, ma'am. Lady Victoria looks very old and weak. Her sorrow written all over her face. Lady Eleanor is a few years younger than Lady Victoria, but she must still be around 80. Her husband and Lady Victoria's husband were brothers, if I'm not mistaken. So the ladies aren't blood relatives. You've only been living here a few years, Lady Eleanor? That's right. I didn't want to live alone in a big house after my husband died. So you moved in with your relatives in Willow Creek and brought Lewis with you? Lewis was our gardener in Wales. He is sometimes a bit difficult, but I didn't have the heart to lay him off. I offered him to come with me and look after the garden here. Which he doesn't seem to do. Well, he didn't cope very well with having to leave his garden and his home in Wales. Tell me about your estate in Wales. It's a lovely castle. Not as big or old as this one. I haven't been back since we left. I'm afraid it's probably in a terrible condition. And the marsh has probably spread even further. It's terrible. I couldn't stomach seeing our home like that. We had many happy years there. When did your husband die? A few years ago, Sir Richard, my husband, was a scientist. He did his experiments in a summer house. I used to joke that he would blow himself up one day. I didn't really believe that that's exactly what would happen. Huh. I'm willing to bet that I was imprisoned in Lady Eleanor's castle. It all fits together perfectly, and the phone call would suggest that it wasn't chosen at random. Did she make her old estate available for the order to use? Lewis is here of his own free will. I don't understand why he doesn't give this new life a go. You are young, Mr. Falk. You don't know what it's like having to leave your home behind you. Lewis's roots are in Wales. A tree withers without roots. Why doesn't he go back then? I've suggested it to him. I promised him a small amount of money to start him off. First I thought he would do it. But then he stayed, after all. Strange. He's a complicated man. He's been working for me for over 20 years, but I still don't have the feeling that I actually know him. I think he blames me for his unhappiness. He only ever speaks to me if it can't be avoided, and I can see that hate in his eyes. What kind of research was Sir Richard doing? He had very diverse interests. After the tragedy 12 years ago, he was mainly concerned with, well, with blood. With blood? He was convinced that the Gordon's blood must somehow be different from that of other people. I think he was looking for a scientific explanation for all of the misery that has accompanied the family for hundreds of years. A curse in a test tube. Insanity is hereditary, as you may know. Why not misfortune? Or the misfortune is only the result of the hallucinations. 
Hmm. That explains what Angelina was looking for in Wales. She was hoping that Richard had found out something interesting before he died. I'm going to have another look around. Goodbye, Lady Eleanor. It's nice to see another face in this house. Huh. The plant hasn't been here long. Considering the amount of light it gets, it's not gonna last long either. I'd say something like a knight or a nobleman. And judging by his clothing, he must have been around a hundred years ago. He seems somehow familiar. Probably an ancestor of the Gordons. Jeez, now that's a friendly looking face. That's how I imagine a bloodthirsty Russian czar would look like. Wild eyes, evil glare, and expensive clothes. I'm quite sure that he didn't earn the bling on his fingers and round his neck through hard work. A small fire for such an impressive fireplace. The old ladies here seem to be a lot tougher than back in the States. Over there, it'd be at least 82 degrees in every room. Uh, I'll have time to stare into the flames and be all melancholy when this is over. The chair looks inviting, but it's too early to have a rest. A huge metal globe. A monstrous thing. The door is slightly ajar. I can see some bookshelves inside. A large double wing door. It's no different from the others. Another door, another corridor, another room. I wonder how many rooms there are in this castle. The hall is arranged like a gallery. The stairs lead up to the gallery and the rooms on the first floor. It's locked. Inspector, you have no reason to be here. This door is to remain closed. Uh, certainly, madam. Uh, please forgive me. Why is she making such a big deal about this door? Well, the dishes are well looked after, but you can't hide their age. They're becoming faded. There ain't many dishes for such a big household, but they're probably only used by the ladies. Much too good for the servants. A kitchen range that could really only be found in furniture catalogs of the last century. That's the way outside. You can see the old stables from here. You can't really make out anymore what this picture's supposed to be. Uh, perhaps it's not such a good idea to hang pictures directly above the stove. Oh, excellent. Transylvania may be somewhere in Romania. But don't worry, we're ready for undead in this castle, too. A coffee grinder is the last thing I'd have expected in an English castle. But it looks really new and unused. The 
door is bolted. Might lead to a storeroom or a cellar. An empty vase. It looks old, like everything here. Sally doesn't really seem to put her all into her job. Hello. Oh, hello. I live in Seoul, here. My name is Falk, Inspector Falk. I'm a policeman. A copper? How exciting. I'm Sally. Do you know this woman? Hmm. Never seen her before. Looks a bit like a snob. I don't suppose there are pictures of all the cooks who have worked here by any chance? No, no idea. Must be ages ago, though, since there was an actual cook here. Ask Bates, he knows everything. Uh, I'd prefer not to ask either him or Lady Victoria. Then I don't know either. You and Bates uh, look after everything here? Well, uh, looking after. Bates does most of that. He lets me do all the dirty work, cleaning, cooking, and all that sort of thing. Isn't that your job? That's what he says all the time. But being honest, I'd expected something quite different, you know? I mean, a castle with such knobs living in it. You'd expect the odd soiree every now and again. Or a uh, cute prince. Well, Charles is off the market now. But anyone under 80 would do this place a world of good. Sometimes it really does seem like a grave here. What can you tell me about Lewis? A disgusting man. Ugh. I was open when I started. He wouldn't be a snob like all the others are here. But he's just as boring and in a permanent bad mood. I never get more than three words out of him. Do you know what's behind the locked door in the hall? I've asked myself that question too. But you can't get a thing out of Bates about it. Once, he got me listening at the door. He gave me such a telling off, like nothing I'd ever known before. He was so mad, he nearly collapsed. He was coughing blood and I had to hold him up. I've been giving the door a wide berth since then. I've got to find out what's behind that door. The rooms there would be an ideal hiding place for one of the mosaic tiles. Is Lady Victoria a good boss? I don't know. Bates hardly lets me talk to her. When I first came here, I made a ladyship a few suggestions on how she might want to redecorate the castle a bit. Just get rid of a bit of the mustiness, you know? Since then, I always have to ask Bates if I want something from a ladyship. What's wrong with Lady Eleanor? What could be wrong with her? Snore. Sits around all day either knitting or reading. Anything else? She plays piano for Lady Victoria every now and again. In this house, that counts as having a wild party. You know, it's about time I got myself another position. You want to leave? Yeah, sooner rather than later. Maybe to, uh movie or a pop star's house. Somewhere where things are a bit lively at least. Can you tell me anything about Samuel's ghost? Apparently it's been seen by a few tourists. Oh yeah, I've seen it too. At one of the windows. It scared the living daylights out of me. A gruesome face. I hope I'll never see it again. Huh, that's true. At which window? I don't remember exactly. I think it was in the Forbidden Wing. Forbidden Wing? Yeah, you know, what's behind the locked door in the hall. Okay, I won't keep you from your work any longer. Ah, don't worry about it.
he is devotedly working on his car. It seems to mean more to him than the garden. Hey, Lewis! You again? I thought you'd been thrown out. Lady Victoria gave me permission to have a look around the castle and the gardens. How nice of her. What do you want? What can you tell me about the castle? Nothing. A big, ugly building. With an overgrown garden. What have I got to do with that? Aren't you the gardener? My garden's a few hundred miles west of here. In Wales. That's right. So you just do the bare minimum here, if at all. The garden's too big for one man alone, and what's the point in looking after it? This whole place is doomed. The house is falling apart. The lady won't live for much longer, and Bates is as good as dead. You're hoping that Lady Eleanor will return to Wales when Lady Victoria dies? Perhaps. That's a nice car. Certainly is. The only decent surprise here. I discovered it behind the stables, built it back up from scratch. My father used to work on a car like this, and he taught me quite a bit. Do you sometimes take it out for a spin? To the coast, for example? I drive the ladies. They used to still have bloody horses in the stable. But looking after them was too much effort for the old folks. Now, this is the only pair of wheels. But the ladies don't leave the house much at all. Bates usually walks to the village. He says it's good for his health. <laughs> but every time it takes a bit longer. You weren't at the coast with the car this morning? No. What can you tell me about Lady Eleanor? If you want to know something about Lady Eleanor, then you better ask Lady Eleanor. She's her own favorite subject. You mean she's egotistical? She threw everything away and fled here in a mad rush after Sir Richard died. Who does such a thing? The castle and the garden in Wales reminded her of her dead husband. And she should have thought of the family history. You don't just give up an house where generations have lived and worked. How did her husband die? He blew himself up, did all kinds of strange experiments. In the last years, he became obsessed with uncovering the secret of what drove Sir William and his sons insane. He hardly left his lab anymore and collapsed in exhaustion more than once. Her ladyship was very worried. Bates seems to be very tired. He's terminally ill. The doctors say it's a miracle he's still alive. But let me tell you, Bates will kick the bucket on the very same day that Lady Victoria dies. Like a dog that follows its master. I think he just finds it unfitting to die before his mistress. He says he's worked for the Gordons for more than 70 years and, and that he knows all their secrets. I'd believe that at the drop of a hat. No one knows the castle and garden better than him. But when it gets to his own bonds, he's getting forgetful. A loyal soul. That's why they've given him Sally, I think. I met Sally. Huh. The only one in the castle who's not at least 100 and starting to decay. Is she a good housekeeper? She's lousy. She often seems to be in trouble with Bates because of that. He's the one that chose her. And turned away much better candidates. Why did he do that? Yeah, if you're worried about being replaced. 
then you chose the worst possible replacement to stay indispensable yourself. That's how it is. Lewis, do you believe in ghosts? Uh, some tourists claim they've seen some here. Oh, yeah, yeah, the reputed ghost. <laughs> they besieged us for weeks on end after Marie planted that rumor. A whole pack of them completely trashed the garden. Lady Eleanor said she gave you the option of, of going back home to Wales, and even offered some money to get you set up. I don't know what that's got to do with you. I just find it strange. You desperately want to go back, and are even offered some money, too. And then? Work as a caretaker in a new bloody housing estate? I've offered more than once to look after the castle in Wales, and keep it in working order. But apparently there's not enough money for that. So, it's not so much about going back to Wales, it's more about going back to your castle and your garden. That's right. What you really want is to turn back time. Unfortunately, that's never been possible. Well, um... See you later. Not if I see you first. He's devotedly working on his car. Huh. Ralph was talking about a shiny black car. Is this the one he saw? But who drove from the castle to the crime scene this morning? And what were they doing there? I don't even know about American cars in the last ten years. My knowledge of English cars from the first half of the century is absolutely zilch. Toolbox. Various wrenches, cloth, hammer, wires, all the things you need. Huh. I think I'll take the big hammer. I could also use it as a weapon if I need to, which might be the case in this place. Uh, I don't need any more. If I do, then I know where I can find it. The best of British technology. At least it used to be. An old wooden ladder. It seems to have been used a lot. The rungs are really worn and smooth. A rather large and heavy hammer. It's not here for banging nails into walls. This is for knocking stuff down. It looks to me like the ladder's old, but still really sound. That's probably the Gordon's family coat of arms. I don't know anything about heraldry. But there are complicated rules about creating and reading coats of arms. It probably means something like, we are a very old family, but unfortunately also quite insane. Please keep your distance. The gate must have been replaced a short time ago. The wood still looks new. But I don't think there's anything suspicious about that. wooden staircase. Probably leads to the stableman's room. I don't want to go up there. Doesn't look very sturdy. I don't want to go up there. Doesn't look very sturdy. Apparently, these things are to blame for the English still driving on the left. 
If you were to guide your horse with your right hand, you'd run the risk of being squashed between the wagons. Judging by its condition, the car was probably in use up until a few years ago, but it's been standing there for some time now. The floor here is rain-sodden and very muddy. The floor here is rain-sodden and very muddy. The floor here is rain-sodden and very muddy. An ancient well. I can't imagine that it's still in use. Even this place must have a normal water supply by now. There used to be some sort of device hanging on this frame, which brought the water to the surface. Who have we got here? Huh. This thieving magpie in a raven suit has something I need. I bet the raven stole the piece of mosaic from Angelina's backpack and brought it here to its nest. He doesn't like that at all. I gotta be careful. Ravens have got hard beaks that are as sharp as knives. They can really make a mess of you. Ow! The critter starts pecking at my fingers as soon as I get near the nest. As long as the bird's in the nest, I've got no chance. The back door leads into the house. Perhaps a kind of tradesman's entrance. few teaspoons. They're all well polished and lined up in a neat row. I'm just gonna take a spoon. The silver spoon is way polished. A basket of knitting gear. Wool, scissors, and that kind of thing. May I borrow a piece of thread, Lady Eleanor? Some thread? Yes, please. Uh, about two yards? <laughs> Certainly. Help yourself. Thanks. Good. Thread is always useful. I took some of the tear-proof stuff. A piece of thread about two yards long. You couldn't hang a ton off it, but it's not gonna shred. I've knotted the spoon to the thread. You're not gonna free that in a hurry. <laughs> 